Hey, it's Jim from Raymarine, back with our next installment of First Responder Training. Uh, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about setting up First Responder AIS on your Raymarine system. Joining me in the studio is Captain Tom. Welcome back. How are you doing, Jim? Great. Thanks for coming in today to talk to us about AIS on Raymarine for First Responders. So Happy it's, to be here. It's a little different than regular AIS that you might have on a on a commercial boat. It or is a very different. Boat. Yeah. So what do you actually need to make the system work? So we need our uh, Axiom Pro okay. or any Axiom equivalent, quite honestly, but the Axiom Pro is the, the multifunction display of choice. And we need the AIS 5000. Okay. Um, once you have those two pieces of equipment installed on the vessel and everything is powered up and, and working, then the magic happens. Then it's time to program both devices with the appropriate information, uh, the passphrase, the MMSI, vessel types, all these types of things, which will then allow that system to become a true first responder, AIS, encrypted Blue Force. And I guess that's really the key, right? Because for first responder applications, a lot of the functions um, beyond what one might think is traditional AIS are, are encrypted. And it's really that encryption key and the encryption handshake between these two pieces of equipment that really make the magic happen. And that's why it's very particular that you need these right. items to make that and, work. And the reality is, is the, the magic actually happens inside of our multifunction display. In, in systems of previous generations, it, it did happen in the AIS. Um, that was something that the Coast Guard was very adamant about when they rewrote the STEDS protocol that, that everything was going to happen from the multifunction display. That's where it happens today. Um, and that's why making sure that these things are, are programmed appropriately to work in, in accordance with each other is very important. Okay. So there are some particular menus in the MFD that we should look at yes. uh, to get this all set up. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to bring up first our Axiom. Uh, we'll bring it up full screen here. We'll pop us in the corner because we want you guys to be able to see our smiling faces. <laughs> All right. So um, there's a unique menu when we're in a responder profile, right? Yeah. So actually, let's talk about that a little bit. When you turn this unit on for the first time, um, it actually goes through some setup procedures. And you actually tell it at that point in time that you are a first responder. Once you do that, then it notices the AIS 5000 in the system via the CTOC NG network or the NEMA 2000 network. And at that point in time, it unlocks this next menu that we're about to look at. Okay, so let's take a peek at it and see what we got in so here. So I'm going to go down into the settings tab from the home page. And I'm going to come up and click on the responder tab. So lots of information um, in the responder tab. And we're just going to kind of go through them one by one. Pretty, pretty simple, self-explanatory stuff for the most part. Uh, the responder vessel type. Um, I actually took the liberty of presetting this in here because there is a huge list of um, vessel types in there and it just takes way too long to scroll through. But you just scroll through and uh, select the appropriate type of vessel. Um, for this application, I just chose local fire and rescue boat. Yeah, and it looks like there's a lot of different Coast Guard hulls in there. There's there customs is. and border protection. There's all sorts of stuff. But there's all the way down to local and state agencies. Yes. And aircraft and other things in there too. Yep. So the next one over is the boat name. Um, whatever the name of the vessel is, if it's, you know, Fireboat 222 or, you know, Nashua Police 101, whatever it might be, you're going to enter your name of your vessel uh, in this field. Apologies, I'm looking at it upside down. All right. So we'll just put responder in there. Um, the next one is the MMSI, and the MMSI is a unique nine-digit number that you are assigned through Boat US. Uh, uh, these ones, I think, are probably coming from the FCC because these get, are going to be part of a ship's right, station you, license. You get it from the FCC. There's usually a – sometimes there's a call sign associated with that mm -hmm. when you get it from the FCC. Uh, but this would be a unique nine-digit number that is assigned to this particular vessel. So we would enter in that nine digit vessel, uh, number and hit the save button. So we'll just simulate that right now. Let's put all threes in there and you can save it. It doesn't go past the nine digits. Uh, the next one we're gonna leave alone for now, the AIS mode. Uh, and we're gonna go down to that next line. So the, the passphrase, that's really where it, all the magic happens. So the passphrase is a 32 bit encryption code that is 
assigned each month by the Coast Guard. It's sent out in an encrypted email. You have to be uh, through the vetting procedures that they have to get on that list as a valid first responder. Um, once you're on that list, then they, they, they send this code out uh, each month, usually a few days prior to the end of the month so that you have it and can um, enter it in in a timely fashion. It's extremely important uh, in our system to have this passphrase up to date. Um, if you don't have the passphrase up to date, let's say, you know, it's, it's the end of the month and the crews got busy and then they go out um, and it happens to be the, the, you know, the first or second day of the next month. If they're still on October's and we're here into November, uh, the system is not going to function as it should. There's yeah. going to be a lot of features that are not going to be accessible to the crews and it's going to do you a disservice. So keeping up on this passphrase is extremely important. Yeah. I mean, to put it very simply, you know, encrypted AIS, it's a very exclusive network. And if you don't have the right pass key, you're not in it. Right. So you have to have the right passphrase. So um, in this field, we would simply enter the 32 um, characters that uh, are assigned for the month. Um, and then we would just hit save. So Jim's just going to kind of mock one up here just to fill in this, the field. And you can see there's a lot of typing to do. One more. And there then hit save. So what happens is um, that passphrase is now in the MFD. There's a button to the right that says clear the passphrase if you made a mistake or need to change it. And then the passphrase auto wipe. Um, what that'll do is, is automatically clear that passphrase out of the system in those number of days. Um, so you can you know choose to use that or not, but most people just leave it at that that thirty mark. I think that's kind of the standard for how the Coast Guard issues the keys right. on a thirty day the, correct valid period. So that right there is the the base level of interaction that you absolutely have to have in order to make this a a valid first responder system. There's a few more lines down here. We'll just talk quickly about them. The data logging. Um, the system is capable of, of, of data logging all sorts of information from uh, the MFD and the AIS um, that is saved to a micro SD within the system, uh, SD1 or SD2, and you can assign that. Uh, you can also turn off the data logging. Um, that would probably be a departmental type of thing, yeah. whether or not the department issues a, a standard operating guideline or a stand, you know, procedure that says, yes, we are going to do data logging. Uh, it's there if you want to use it. If you don't want to use it, you can simply turn it off. Um, if you do turn it off, I mean, if you could just do that for me and pop back out to the home screen, um, you will see a red line in the top right of the display through the SD card. That's just indicating that the data logging is turned off. So if you see that red line up there, that's what that indicates. Yep, it's up here on the top right corner, just to the right of the clock. These are kind of some status icons up there. Right. Uh, so let's go back to that responder tab for a sec. Settings, responder. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to bring um, into this is we now have included a uh, password lock feature on the MFD. Um, if you chose to lock out the system, you could assign it a passcode here. Uh, that would essentially lock it out to, I guess, only the administrators of the system per mm -hmm. se. Um, wouldn't allow the guys in the field to make any changes. Uh, I say use that one cautiously because there might be some changes that you need to make in the field. So feel that one out. Yep. Yeah, that also probably comes down to a departmental policy sort of thing. Correct. Um, they may want to administer that. Uh, with some authority or they might not. So, right. so as far as the multifunction display goes, that's the information that has to be populated into it in order to make it work. So now I'd like to show them the, the AIS 5000 because there is one page of data on there that needs to be filled out. All right, so we're gonna transition to our product camera. Let's bring that up here. Kind of get it lined up a little bit before we unleash it. That looks pretty good. All right, here comes the product camera. Back up just a little bit. All right. So um, on the AIS itself, if you go up to the setup menu, um, there's a page that says uh, 
vessel data. And under this vessel data page is where you need just to populate a few more pieces of information. Uh, again, the MMSI is there, the ship's name. Uh, there's also a blank field there that says call sign. Um, if you were issued that MMSI from the FCC, you, you will get a call sign with it. That's where that goes. I'm just trying to get it to autofocus a little bit. Yeah. We had it there for a second. We had it. Yeah, because the glare is giving it some grief. Um, the IMO field, you don't need to mess with. The ship type, again, just go ahead and, and put in whatever best represents um, your agency's vote. And then the next two are the um, internal and external dimensions of the vessel and specifically where the AIS antenna is located. Um, class A, Class B uh, AISs that transmit are required by FCC to have their own uh, GPS receiver. Mm -hmm. And it's required to um, basically tell the AIS where that is on the vessel. So when it does transmit, um, that's where the length and width of your vessel are kind of accounted for. Yes, yeah, and um, what you'd actually see if you zoom in real tight uh, on your chart display, for example, uh, vessels that have their length and width information programmed in there, um, their, their AIS icons will actually uh, scale to actual size. Correct. So once those two things are accomplished on the AIS 5000 and on the uh, Axiom Pro MFD, um, you go back to a chart page, you should be able to view your AIS icons. You can then control your method of transmit, whether mm -hmm. or not you're receive only, normal transmit, or encrypted. Um, in the encrypted field, guys, there's just a couple of things to take away from that. Um, other responder vessels that are AIS 5000 equipped will be blue. You will also see for some time... Um, blue icons of older vessels with the older L3 type of AIS. Mm -hmm. um, Raymarine has, has written software to allow those vessels to be able to be viewable. Um, but please understand that those vessels will not see you transmitting. They just, because of the, the STEDS type of encryption, um, there's just no way for them to see us. Yep, they're uh, yeah, on an older generation of uh, encrypted network. Right. Doesn't, doesn't play nicely. Um, there's some AIS status information, I think, on the home screen of the product. That there is. is worth talking about. Let's, uh, let's go back up to the home screen just to kind of talk about what is in there. So we're going to exit out of the menu. <clears throat> up here on the corner, uh, I see it says unknown. Of course, we talked about the slashed out SD card here because we turned off the STEDS data logging. Um, but if we touch this little menu, um, what do we get here? So if you click on that menu, you're going to have the three choices of how the AIS is going to be uh, working. In a normal mode, it will transmit and receive in an open protocol. So all vessels can see you, and you can see all vessels. Okay. Right? So, so in Just like a regular AIS. Just like a regular AIS. In the receive-only mode, self-explanatory, the AIS is only receiving. Okay. And in the restricted mode, uh, it is transmitting, but in the, what they call the blue force mode, so only other AIS 5000 equipped vessels will see you. All right. So this is like secret squirrel mode. Secret can, squirrel mode. Yeah. We can see each other, but no one can see us. Yep. And then you, you asked about the unknown. Well, if you notice on the bottom, it says status unknown. If you click there, there's a few pre-programmed messages that a lot of it is pertaining to Coast Guard. Um, but most of the time, what guys are running in are ops normal. It just lets the other vessels know that everything's cool with you. And, and, and uh, you know, you're just kind of in the standby mode waiting for a response. Okay. Um, so that would be kind of the, the other two things that you'd have to play with on that uh, home screen. Very good. So this kind of gives you the basics of uh, what this system can do, and certainly there is more to it, and uh, we'll be providing some additional details on that in an upcoming video, so do watch out for it. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in today, uh, watching some of our first responder content. Of course, if you have questions or comments too, certainly feel free to comment uh, down below in the video feed or to reach out to us here at Raymarine. We're always happy to take your questions uh, and help you get started with our gear. 
So until our next installment, uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thanks.